Welcome to Sugarcane Country, the heart of KwaZulu Natal, and the home of the third round of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. The Toyota dealer Sugarbelt 400 proved to be a great outing for Chris Fisser and Yampi Barenhorst from Ford Racing. The pair finished second, keeping them at the top of the standings. Team Castrol Toyota's Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy captured their first win of the season, taking them to second place in the championship. Lying in third place is Malcolm Conk and Johan Berger. Defending champs Duncan Foss and Rob Howey from Team Castrol Toyota are fourth after third place in Quinsula Natal. Gary Berthold and Siegfried Rousseau of Atlas Copco are fifth, despite a major mishap in the third round. Yeah, lying in fourth and uh, having a good run. We went slightly off into a tree and uh, then the power steering pipe broke. So that's the end of our race. It was a great event so far. But unfortunately, the Atlas Copco Hilux, uh, no power steering, can't go too far in these mountains. One behind them, another Atlas Copco team of Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson. Their gear lever broke off, they lost reverse, but the Rubicon Racing's Lo De Brain and Rian Whaling are seventh. Ford Racing's Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable picked up their second DNF on the trot. They lie eighth in the standings. As for Region Racing's Michael Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson, a sixth place finish at Eston, the best of the season, takes them to ninth. And in tenth, Yanni Fissa and Yorks LaRue. Now for the championship leader. The bigger picture sees you on top overall, you must be thrilled. Yeah, I must say we, that's our main aim to come here or to, to, to put some good points in the back and that's what we did and yeah, I must say uh, the car was good today, no, no mistakes, uh, the car was just excellent. Another great drive from Ford Racing's Fisser and Bardnos. 15 points separate themselves and Taylor and Murphy from Team Castrol Toyota. Cock and Berger from Cock and Sons Toyota are 26 points off the pace. It's billed as the toughest race on the planet, the Dakar Rally. It's certainly not for the faint-hearted, but teams do have plans in place to get there, like Ford Racing. The whole new range of projects started off with the Dakar project in mind. Uh, we were contracted by Ford of America to build a new Ranger for them, and that started off as the, the Dakar car, as we call it, or the FIA car, as we call it. Uh, that car's now finished. Uh, we'll, we'll start testing with that next week. So that's been our main project. Halfway through that project, uh, Ford South Africa then asked us to build two new cars for them. So hence why the, the FIA project, the Dakar car, uh, has sort of taken a bit of a back seat. But that project, it's well on its way now. Looking at the likes of Toyota, having done so well uh, in the Dakar field, even just within the last couple of years, that must certainly be a, a massive motivation for you guys. 100%. If we see how well Toyota have done, and even Nissan in the past, how well they've done, that uh, certainly gives us a, a, a good feeling that we've really got competitive cars, we, we know what we're doing in South Africa, and for us to go out and beat Toyota locally, it just it makes us even more excited to know that we, we've certainly got the goods, we've got the car, we've got the team to go and do it. It's just a matter of, of getting all the rents together which is the difficult part then there's Toyota South Africa now there's no doubt that you want to defend your crown in the championship but there is a greater goal namely Dakar oh yeah we we continually uh, developing there and things that we've done for this race are, are some things that we might use in the in the Dakar at the end of the year so that development's ongoing and uh, we're getting our, our, our sort of objectives sorted and uh, Every, all the plans finalised, we've already started booking rooms in South America, so yeah, we're in full swing in that as well. I'm sure every race leads to an extra tweak uh, looking ahead to Dakar. How uh, uh, have things been? Yeah, it, they certainly do, and uh, we, we, we're continually thinking about it. Every time we go out and test and every race, we've got a few things on the car, so it's, uh, it's all going to the end result, we hope. But we've got the right ingredients and uh, we've got the right test area and the, all, all the ingredients in South Africa. So we'll see, we'll do our best and we'll see what happens at the end. Regent Racing also has Dakar aspirations. The local championship is a fantastic proving ground. Um, we're looking at Dakar 
possibly this coming year, but definitely the year thereafter. Okay, so we can definitely count on 2015. Uh, 2014, uh, you're holding thumbs. Indeed, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And uh, seeing how it goes, how, th how are things going? I mean, uh, what, what could possibly hold you back? It's quite a complicated car. There are lots of things to get right. The Dakar is obviously very demanding. Um, at this stage, there's nothing major, but uh, we just want to work through it and make sure we don't make fools of ourselves. Let's turn our attention to the Class D and E standings. And back on the road, the force fuel Toyota highlights of Luke Buerta and Kevin Durston. Luke, firstly, behind the wheel today. Finally here. Happy to be here. The last two events, we weren't here because we had major electrical problems. Sorted out finally. What a relief, eh? <laughs> and uh, behind the wheel at a national event, are you excited? Absolutely excited, blood's pumping, ready to go and mix with the boys. Mixing with the boys and two of the biggest boys you're likely to meet are the Horn brothers, Johan and Vanna. The Malela and Toyota pair were at their brutal best at Eston to clinch a win. Those that looked unlikely to finish, Douglas Fear and Kurt de Villiers of Brayton's removals. Uh, computer just turned off and um, battery was not running. I don't know what's going on. I think the, the battery might have, we think it's a dry joint or something, but there's absolutely no power. Stone dead. Impressively, their Toyota Hilux was up and running soon after, and they were the only team to finish in Class E. heard from Force Fuel's Luke Buerta a little earlier, back behind the wheel of their Hilux. Kevin Durston, his navigator, and unfortunately for them, it was not to be a fairy tale return to the championship. A heavy roll putting an end to their race. And a real baptism of fire for the pair, Buerta finding things a lot more difficult in the driver's seat. So we had a bit of an electrical problem the entire race. Started yesterday, we thought we sorted it out. She was uh, dying on us, and then she started accelerating by herself, resetting the ignition the whole time. Then she accelerated by herself into a corner, tried to save it, but we went over, and we're all okay. It was a fantastic ride. The Oerstazens, Jack and Sorrel, suffered a similar fate in their Land Rover Defender. Having captured a total of 24 points in their first two rounds, their participation in the Toyota Dealer Sugar Bowl 400 Round 3 of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship featured disaster. You all right? Is you all right? You okay? A scary moment there, but luckily both men okay, and thankfully plenty of spectators on hand to get the defender back on all fours. Almost unbelievably, they made it to the finish, putting them top of the Class D and E standings on 33 points. Line clear of the Trisom Toyota pair of Jason Fenton and Vincent van Allemann. Our Ford Racing's Dirk Patan and Jakobus Klaassen are leading Class E on 22. Joining the horns on 12 points, Doug Fier and Kurt de Villiers from Brighton's removals Toyota. I'll tell you, the second loop was a killer. In Class E, our suspension is uh, not as good as the other cars. And uh, tonight I'm going to find the guy who set the second loop and kill him. <laughs> no, it, was, it was hectic. The first loop was lovely. We uh, obviously did it three times this weekend with the prologue, no problems. But that uh, east loop in this car, it was dead. Let me tell you, it was really bad. You had a good finish. Uh, I mean, you can blame the second loop all you want, but I mean, it, it, didn't, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, the other two classes unfortunately didn't make it. I believe uh, the one rolled just before the DSP. Um, but once we saw them on the side of the road, we backed right off and just made sure we brought it home. Take it easy and just uh, guarantee to finish. In the past, we've seen the likes of Finnecher, Fani de Villiers, John T. Rhodes, Natalie de Toy, Heinz Winkler, Roxy Lowe and Stefan de Blanche take up the celeb challenge with Archie Rutherford. And this time around, it was the turn of Stefan de Blanche again. Now I work with him quite a bit and he is so excited to have been given a second bite of the cherry by the Regent Racing Team. 
and he actually got to the race literally minutes from the start, having completed the very tough Sony to see cycle challenge only a few hours earlier. Well, I was going to get dressed here in the tent and everything, but there wasn't any time. I got here with 12 minutes to go, so I got dressed on the side of the road <laughs> next to my car, <laughs> straight into the car, quickly studied the, the book how to, how to, you know, the, the distances and all the hazards that's on the road and on the route, and uh, yeah, off we went. But it went all right, so maybe I should do it again next time. Well, I caught up with Archie on my way here to chat to you, and he is raving about you. He said you weren't flustered whatsoever. Uh, you're cool, calm, and collected. Facing the hacker compared to taking part in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship? Wow, she's, nah, I'll be honest, this, this gives you a bit of a rush. Uh, in the beginning, you don't know what the car can do, so you're really, really nervous. But uh, once you see what these drivers can get out of these cars, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll rather face a hacker than go in one of these cars. Despite the lack of preparation, the Regent Racing Celeb team finished 11th overall in the production vehicle class. Not bad, considering almost half the field failed to finish. Stefan, how was it? Yeah, it was, a, it was a long day at the office. It was tough and hard and fast and wet and uh, slippery. But, uh, you know, we got through it. We had a bit of problems with our power steering. We broke it uh, 65 k's into the race, but somehow we managed to, uh, to get into the pits. They fixed it up for us and we finished the race. It's the second time you competed in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. How does this compare to your last one? To be fairly honest, either I'm getting older or uh, the, the body's not holding up anymore, but this was this was quite a bit harder than the one at Carnival City. I found the navigational process, the navigation here was easier for me maybe because I've had a little bit of experience in that now, but uh, on the body, the bumps and the bruises, it, this one was much harder. Another brilliant performance from the former Bach winger. We'll be back after the break. I'm Justin Rose. Golf's an individual sport, as we know, but you're on your own out there. You have your caddy, you have your coaches, but you're the only one hitting the shots. I have a lucky number, which is 99. That's the number I use on my golf ball. That came about really because my wife's lucky number was nine, and I figured once we got married, may as well double the luck. Fresh air, beautiful places. I get to do for a living what people like to do for recreation, and I think it's important not to lose sight of that. It's the fact that you've got no one else to blame. It can become too serious, it can become a job at times, and I think at points in your career it's easy to fall out of love with the game of golf. I still love it, I still wake up, I still want to practice. I think that that's the most important thing, you need to keep the passion for the game. Welcome back to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. We move on to Class A, and Eston was dominated by Evan Hutchison and Donny Stassen, the pair finishing first in their brand new Merch Right Bat Fiver. Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell from Dirt Sport Components are second overall after managing a fifth place in KZN. Third in the standings, a very impressive father and son pair of Quinton and Cully Silva from Elegant Fuel. They came third in the race, but are fourth overall, the Harpers Nick and Ryan from Motorright. While they failed to finish the race, the other Silva pair of Hammond and Vickart from Elegant Fuel are fifth in the championship. Local boys Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray of Decatur's Properties just missed out on a podium spot, but they're sixth for the season. Hutchison and Stassen lead the way on 55 points, just four ahead of the KZN pair of Gibson and Campbell, while Quinton and Cully Silbalt are ten adrift of the leaders, the elegant fuel pair capturing second place in the third round. It was a good result for us. I think uh, our sponsors are really happy. I mean, elegant fuel have been supporting us for the last couple of years, and finally we, we're getting some results. Um, it's good for the championship. We had a good run last time out, and, and uh, we're building up points slowly towards the end of the year. The Toyota dealer Sugarbelt 400 was again organized by the Natal Off-Road Motor Club, which celebrates their 30th anniversary this year. The first race took place way back in 1983, and they've gone from strength to strength ever since. It's been three years since the championship has taken place at Eston. It was run in the Dundee area in 2011 and moved to Richmond last year. Dave, you must be phenomenally proud of the fact that this is back at Eston. 
Yeah, I am. It, you know, when it disappeared for a couple of years, it was a bit of a, a sore point. But, uh, you know, having it back is great. It's good for the community. And it has been for years and years and years. And a lot of benefits from it. it puts Eston on the map, which is a great thing. And, uh, well, it, we like it to carry on for as long as possible, hopefully, yeah. And tell us about motor racing and the community. I mean, it, it, it's got a strong footing here. Yeah, you know, there was a race organized in the middle over here in 1983, and a couple of us got involved in it, and it grew from there. There were quite a lot of people involved locally, um, competing and involved with all the organizing and route finding and so on. And uh, when the um, Sugar Belt became a national event, and I forget what year it was, but it's some time ago, um, it, it became an even bigger thing. and we. We've really sort of put all we could into it over the years. Previously, the NORMC National was run as the Trans Tonga Land in Mkuzi, but proved to be a logistical nightmare organizing the race as it was too far away. So it was moved to Eston, where it incorporated both the Eston and Mid Ilova areas. It has always been based at the Beaumont Eston Farmers Club. When it first started, there were a number of local farmers who competed, but most of these have moved on. A few sons, the next generation, still compete though. Over the years, the race has injected millions into the area. As was stated by a prominent farmer, Eston was put on the map by the Sugar Belt race. And now to the KZN Regional Championship. All these competitors are from KwaZulu-Natal and have things slightly easier in that they do half the race that the national teams do. Unless they want to compete in the national event, meaning their time after the first leap is registered for the regionals and they carry on to complete the rest. One of those doing both is John Thompson. John, excited for Eston? Yeah, oh no, very much, uh, very much so. We're waiting for this. So this is obviously our, our Natal event. So there's a lot of guys that are keen to come and show the national guys where they can land up, uh, especially after prologue. Many eyes will be on Thompson, but there are plenty of other locals who will be competitive. The guys are all, everybody's fast. The top guys, they're all fast. Doesn't matter what conditions they're racing, they're all going to be fast. That said, I mean, it is home advantage, but I've chatted to quite a few guys who've got home advantage. It, yeah, there's a lot of us that race over here. You know, Natal, there's quite a few of us that race. I mean, one of our regional rounds is around here, but I mean, we've raced here for 20 years on bikes net, so racing shoe and timber, it's the same. So it's good, it's the same for everybody. Uh, obviously, you know, the area, uh, what do you make of the weather? You know, this area has always been, uh, when, the, when it rains, it leaves a lot, of wet, a lot of wet areas and a lot of slimy, snotty stuff. So, yeah, we just got to tap off the throttle a little bit and hope for the best. How's the car performing? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, it's always, and this car's won less than a couple of times, so we'll see. These guys might only compete in the KZN Regional Championship, but their vehicles are as well turned out and mechanically sound as those of Big Brother Nationals. The competitiveness between teams is equally stern with every second counting. Among those doing both, the dirt sport components team of Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell, they were magnificent in the prologue. Reg Sutton and Warren Bienica finished just after a minute behind them in their Zarco Magnum. I spoke to Reg before the start and he was massively excited. And it shows. We saw Lance Trithui earlier and know that young man in his arms wasn't his co-driver, who in fact is Carl Wichmann. They were third quickest in the prologue. Closely followed by Glenn Gibson and Clint Brook from Dirt Sport Components. Rounding off the top five, Marcus Taylor, driving all on his lonesome in a JRE. The spectacular course at Eston providing a variety of different challenges, such as this very wooded area, which some overcame a lot easier than others. None more so than Gibson and Campbell, getting the best time in the prologue, with Sutton and Bienica second. The conditions were tricky yesterday, that it was changing. You'd You'd get on the gas and then all of a sudden you get into a section that's really slippery. So they were nervous at times, but I enjoyed the conditions. I'm sure you did. I had a phenomenal effort yesterday. We were very happy. I must be honest, I'm quite surprised because we came back in after the prologue and we, my navigator, myself, Warren, we, we felt like we could have probably done a little bit more. But then you look at other people's times, we, it's, it was fairly competitive. <laughs> If Sutton thought day one was good, he had far better things coming his way on day two. He and Bianica put on a superb performance in loop one.
The men they overtook, Trithui and Vichman, were hot on their heels in their bat spec too. A magnificent chopper shot capturing the terrific surroundings they found themselves in. Although at that speed, it's hard to appreciate it all. Arthur Barnes and Anthony Usher were going along well in their bat spec zero. As were the Schroders, Manfred and Justin in their Zarko. Thousands of spectators lined the route to cheer on the locals. No doubt they were impressed by Marcus Taylor taking on the elements by himself. It certainly can't be easy. Daniel Brooks opting to have a co-driver in Gavin Gray. The pair coming in sixth after loop one. The sugar cane proved to be extremely tricky for the drivers. Although Brooks seemed to have no trouble getting through it. Coming in seventh after loop one, Don Thompson and Wayne Foster in their Zarko. Another man opting to go it alone, Tony Ball in a JRE. The two Bretts, Gurney and Hulls, enjoyed a trouble-free run, impressive given the fact that they communicate via sign language. Another single-seater, this mighty mag belonging to Ralph Boyce. It's exciting times ahead for the new Polaris vehicle, and Gareth Woolridge and Simon Harrison had a ball testing it out. So, a great ride from Sutton and Bienica taking over first place from Truthui and Wichmann after the first 70 Ks, while Barnes and Asher were lying in third. Nothing much changed for the front runners in the first loop as Sutton and Bielica continued to dominate, capturing the crown after leading for most of the race. Barnes and Asher got one better than Loop 1 West, finishing second in their bat spec zero. On board now with Marcus Taylor, and after a great run in the first half of the race, he encountered this unfortunate situation. A bit of mayhem up ahead with one vehicle blocking his route. Nothing to do but push the car out of the way, Gently does it. Nope, not enough of an opening. A bit more should do though. There we go. That looks like a big enough gap. And off he goes. Straight into the dreaded sugar cane and that's why it's dreaded. It may look harmless but it certainly isn't Taylor's race coming to an end. There were no major hiccups for Brooks and Gavin Gray, the Ducatas properties pair finishing third in their bat spec four. Unable to crack a spot in the podium and coming home in fourth place, Brett Gurney and Brett Hulse in their GMP Evo 4. Rolf Voigt's proving that a navigator isn't a necessity, a fifth place finish for the mighty mag driver. Finishing in sixth place, Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell in their dirt sport components porter. Of course, they had another whole race to go, as they were also competing in the national championship. A great run from Woolridge and Harrison in the brand new and very cost-effective Polaris. A seventh place finish for them. Watch out for this vehicle in the future. Not far behind them in a Zarko light, Rob Spencer and Kevin Turon. Certainly not looking pretty for the race co of Stephen Morrell and Bradley Matason. Their race came to a rather ugly end. Yeah, we broke the air off, eh? But you overshoot the corner, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no brakes, eh? It was a bit, <laughs> bit of an overshoot, I think, yeah. <laughs> and big rocks. Anyway, that's the end for us. In complete contrast, Sutton and Bjernica had a fabulous end, finishing in a time of 3 hours, 24 minutes and 3 seconds. Just over 3 and a half minutes ahead of Barnes and Asher, while Brooks and Gray were just over 10 minutes adrift. In the Class P standings, as always, there's plenty expected from the Century Property Racing team of Colin Matthews and Alan Smith. They put in a great time of 56 minutes and 38 seconds during the prologue, one of the few cars that didn't reach the hour mark. Unfortunately, they didn't experience the same fortunes during the race itself. 
After a coming together with Anthony Taylor, the Century CR3 never recovered. A broken track rod resulting in no steering and an end to their race. Well, Kutsia and Sandra Lampuskachny had a superb race. They never got out of the car once, despite describing the conditions as very slippery and extremely tough. It was also a good run for Jeremy Wood and Ashley Thorne in their ace code. Finishing third amongst Class P, Nick Gosler and Andrew Massey in their Zarko Magnum. Despite not making it to the finish, Matthews and Smith still lead the standings on 44 points, but they're just four points ahead of Thompson and Zermatten, who also failed to complete the race. The performance of the Lobeskachnys has shot them up to third spot. Argentina, Chile and Peru. Three beautiful countries which feature spectacular yet unforgiving terrain. They also play host to the Dakar Rally. And the Donaldson Cross Country Championship offers competitors a glorious opportunity to get there. Dakar Challenge is a great opportunity for, for the people that compete in the uh, Cross Country Motor Racing Championship. And also for the bikers because uh, the organisers have recognised that there's a good people here, good competitors. and. You know, to win that challenge uh, is a lot of money. It's, uh, I would say, on the car side, at least uh, 250 to 300,000 Rand towards your costs of going and racing. So I like the fact that it's international recognition and I also like the fact that uh, we're giving our competitors something to, to shoot for. Well, lots to look forward to for those that harbor Dakar dreams. But first, the Donaldson Cross Country Championship crosses borders as we head to Kumakwane Habarone, Botswana for the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race, which takes place over three days from the 21st to the 23rd of June. Last year, thousands of spectators witnessed the best of cross country action. This year promises to be no different. The Donaldson Cross Country Championship brought to you by Donaldson Filtration Systems, a market leader in filtration solutions.